All right. Hey, how's it, everybody? It is 5 p.m. West Coast time, 2 p.m. No, 3 p.m.? Yes, 3 p.m. Hawaii time, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, and 7 p.m. for our Central Time folk. I am Mad Statter. This is Chatter with Statter. And it looks like we've got Rick in the house saying good evening. And it looks like subscribed uh, for 14 months. Thank you so much, Rick, for the subscription and your moderation duties that you do so well. Looks like Cindy Krause is also in the house. Awesome. Excelente. This is great. So... Why don't we get the party started? Thanks, Rick. Thanks. Thanks. So, all right. How's about this? Yeah, I know you can't. But now you can, right? Can you hear me now? You can hear me now, right? Hold on, right? You can hear me now, right? I was so proud of myself. I had it all figured out. Except for the mute button. Okay, so... 5 p.m. West Coast time, 3 p.m. Hawaii time, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 7 p.m. for our Central Time folk. We already got the party started. I want to thank Rick for the sub and the moderation duties. I want to thank Cindy for being here, ready to go. And the first order of business, which I was trying to tell you about, <clears throat> I don't know what you can hear in my house. If you hear a humming, a growling, a rumbling, whatever you would describe it as, in the background, that is the sound of my new washing machine, washing my whites in a heavy load with bleach and a hot soak. Oh my, oh my. It's the sound of happiness is what it is. I'm fairly certain the microphone can't pick that up, but on the off chance that you're just like, what is that low level background noise? It's the best noise ever. It's the noise of the washing machine. That is right. And let's see here. Rick working on Darlene's car all afternoon. Yeah, I saw on Andy Bumatai's stream that you um, uh, were rotating the tires, I guess, is what you were doing there. Speaking of which, I should probably think about rotating or <clears throat> rather going to get my tires rotated at some point. Um, but I'm glad that you were able to catch a little bit of Andy's stream, if nothing else. And I'm super stoked you're able to come in here on my or on our stream chatter with statter because let me tell you it ain't nothing without the statterbox crew chatting it up for us and uh that is what i'm hoping we can do today because i am not uh one who has the show very ready today because you see i was busy working on real work uh that is not <sighs> this stream is very much real work but you know the kind of work that i have a boss for that work and I was busy doing my laundry. Yes, so far I've got three loads, uh, or the third load is currently in, and then uh, there will at least be two more loads tonight, but I'm thinking there might even be three more loads tonight because basically everything is going to get washed. I'm telling you. And once I wash it, I'm probably going to wash it again just because I can. And for those of you who are wondering, well, what washing machine did you get? Because I'm sure you're holding your breath. We're... You're, you're waiting with anticipation. Um, I got myself the Maytag, like everybody suggested. Top loader. It ended up fitting through my door. And um, hey, SD Dodger, good to see you. I am regaling everyone with tales of the most boring topic in the world, and that is washing machines. That is right. Um, <laughs> and uh, let me tell you, I am super stoked. And Rick, don't worry. Don't. I won't overdo the laundry. You're going to get it all done. No, man, I have so many things that could be washed that haven't been, you know, like from bedspreads to this to that. I will be washing my clothes at home 
forever. Yes, I did get um, <laughs> SC Dodger put some shoes in there. You'll know it's there. Absolutely, everyone will hear. So that was what I'm talking about. So if you, I don't know if you can hear a weird rumbling noise in the background, but it is the best appliance ever, and that is the new washing machine I got today. And um, unfortunately, though, after the um, the stream that we had where everyone was coaching me on what kind of machine I should get, uh, so I, I, I decided, okay, uh, most likely it's going to be the Maytag. I little, did a little bit more research just to see if there was something else out there. There was not. So... Um, so, oh, Darlene, I think you spoke just a smidge too soon. You're glad it worked out smoothly. It all, it did, but there was a little bit of a bump in the road. So I, uh, I finally decided, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I've got my credit card out. I'm gonna buy it. And so I go to homedepot.com and it's like, you know, this is the store that I need and this is what I choose and buy it. You're going to have to contact the store about availability of this particular model, you please contact the store. You cannot purchase it online or whatever. And I was like, well, that sucks. But I was like, that's okay, because I've still got other Home Depots that are close to me that can deliver to me. So I was like, let's go to this one. This model is sold out. I was like, oh, well, that's a different message than the first message. And that sounds a little bit more like no. And so then, boop doo I went to the other store and boom, it was also sold out. So I was like, okay. That kind of sucks. The machine that I want is all sold out. <laughs> but then I remembered, hey, I noticed that they had this exact same machine at Lowe's for the exact same price. But the reason why I decided to go to Home Depot first was because I knew that they had the $40 Holloway with the free delivery. And I wasn't sure if Lowe's had that. So I went to Lowe's. Fingers crossed. Not only did they... Um, not only did they... Uh, have it in stock they actually said we could give it to you we could get it to you in like two days and i was like i'm not ready for it yet i still have to empty out the pathway to get it there so i ended up getting it today and it looks like everybody's doing laundry so let's see here kenny from the cove sorry to be tardy to the party it was laundry night tonight pow laundry now excellent day kenny you are coming in at the exact perfect time because we are talking about the laundries Talking about the laundries and um, and my new washing machine, which I have to say, I probably wouldn't have right now if it weren't for the Satterbox crew, because I really, um, you know, with with appliances or with any major purchase, you really want to make sure that you know what you're doing. And I honestly can say I didn't really know what I was doing. And so to get all of the feedback about um, about the different brands makes and models, etc. It really made me uh, very confident in the purchase. So, if this machine breaks, it's all your fault, you guys. It's all your fault. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. And let's see here, SD Dodgers, lots of reasons coming out not to use dryer sheets. Um, Puzzy Cat, dirty laundry is getting clean. And absolutely, Darlene, you guys were a huge, huge help. Now, I don't know what you guys were talking about with the laundry sheets, but I'll tell you what, I don't ever use laundry sheets. I use the dryer balls that, the dryer balls, the plastic dryer balls, they have wool ones too, they might work, I've never used them. But the plastic dryer balls, um, they help with fluffing the towels and keeping the static down. I don't like using um, any kind of fabric softener or dryer sheets because it makes the it makes my um, towels less absorbent. It actually like you know repels the water, and which is exactly what it's supposed to do because fabric softeners are um, basically just plasticizers that coat your your fabrics in a very thin layer of plastic, and um, and that is definitely problematic from a pollution standpoint. Dryer sheets and fabric softeners are actually really not good for the environment, but that's not why I don't use them. I mean, there's there's legitimate reasons not to use them that are very environmentally conscious. Not at all why I don't use them. The reason why I don't use them is because it makes my dry, my washcloths and my my towels not absorb water, and I want my washcloth and my towel to absorb water. I don't know about you guys, but that's kind of 
what um, what I thought towels were for. And Kenny, Kenny, definitely have to have clean skivvies and whatnots for your appointment tomorrow. I don't know what your appointment is, but even if you didn't have an appointment, you still needed the clean skivvies. Let me tell you, my friend, I was running low on the clean skivvies, so it's a gosh darn good thing that this uh, this washer came in today, because otherwise I was going to be hand washing in order to get them clean, because once I ordered the washing machine, I kind of was just like... I'm not going to go to the laundromat anymore unless I have to. So I stubbornly put my foot down, even though my laundry pile definitely could have gone to the laundromat before they, before this machine got delivered. And let's see here. Um, Rick saying that um, you did something you never would have guessed you'd do. You drove on the Milwaukee mile track. Well, tell me about that, Rick. I'm not even sure what a Milwaukee Mile track is. Is this like a race track? And why were you driving on it when you never thought you could? Do tell, do tell. Of course, if you um weren't supposed to be there, then you don't have to give us details. We don't need that. Um, <laughs> SD Dodger, your mom, and I think everybody's mom always said that. Like, don't ever get in, you know, in an accident unless you got some clean undies. And let's see here. Um, Darlene, you've been trying to cut back on your liquid fabric softener. You didn't know about the absorbency decrease with the towels. Yeah, honestly, I think you'll notice. I, I think you'll notice a difference once you start uh, eliminating it from your laundry uh your laundry habits, uh, but you know, um, uh, perhaps maybe I just use too much liquid detergent or whatever. I don't know, but let's see here. Um, it's a racetrack for Indy cars. Cool. And um, let's see here. Um, uh, Mad Stutter skivvies are optional. The appointment is to have a suture removed from your elbow. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Oh, no, you were stuck in a traffic jam on the track? Well, okay, wait. Hold up. Okay, well, clearly you were allowed to be there. <laughs> if there was a traffic jam. But, uh... Why was there traffic on a racetrack? I'm so confused. I am just so confused. Shouldn't really surprise anybody that I'm confused, but... I'm so confused. So, yeah, well, do tell, since you were allowed to be there. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you had to drive there to pick up a holiday cookie book giveaway for Darlene. You just drove her. That's right. And I saw that cookie book cookbook on Darlene's Facebook feed today. And she hinted that she likes to at least do two different recipes from that book every year. So let's see here. Okay. Uh, Darlene coming in with more deeds. It's the Milwaukee racetrack, but he was appeasing me. Every year, we energy here collects cookie recipes and puts out a yearly recipe book for Christmas cookies. Gotcha. So you want to get your free cookie recipe book. Now, when you say we energy, I don't know what that is. I'm assuming that's like the Wisconsin energy energy. Like, I'm assuming it's your energy company, your power company or not okay it is your power company okay okay because i was just making stuff up but now we know that i was not okay here we go excellent day so um it is the time of year when the holidays are starting to start i guess halloween is maybe the unfortunate kickoff of the holiday season even though halloween really isn't part of the holiday season it does seem like halloween is when the season starts um, so let's see here. Uh, Rick was saying, though, you went to drive on the track, but there were plenty other times worth the races when you were a kid. Got it. Got it. Well, <clears throat> as I was saying, it is the holiday season. It's starting to be the holiday season. And one of the holidays that we do have in this era right now is Veterans Day. And Veterans Day is coming up in a couple days, from what I understand. And I'm going to have a video debuting on my YouTube channel on Veterans Day that I filmed, I didn't film it, that I videoed going through the National Cemetery in Covington. Now this video was made in April 
uh, April 19th, I believe. It uh, features not fall colors, but springtime blooms. And uh, I just thought I would maybe debut that little video going through the National Cemetery in Covington, Washington. And so I, um, I thought I'd just share it with you guys right here today. That way you'll be in the know when it shows up on the YouTube channel on the actual day of the holiday. of another space shuttle once again we'll put man into space as he floats amongst the twilight he'll look back and say oh my what a human race while the heavens look at us we're sleeping dream up our own paradise we'll float over mountains and valleys the oceans they are so nice we've traveled through sunsets for centuries we're amazed at eclipse of the moon And looking back at 1975 Those days gone by too soon Then the astronaut looked out of his window and he prayed as he floated through space He said, God, will you ever forgive us? My, what a human race da -da -da.
All right, so there we go. Uh, Pecola T, no matter how often you see military tributes and parades, gives you a lump in your throat. Well, well, hopefully. I don't know if I want the lump in the throat reaction with that video, but, you know, I definitely would not be offended. Um, yeah, I uh, have been keeping that one up my sleeve for quite some time. As you know, that video, or as I mentioned, that video was actually videoed back in April. Um, and I have to admit, actually, when I was videoing it, I was going to, um, I was going to put it out on Memorial Day. That was the intention. But I never got my act together to edit it properly. Uh, to, well, <laughs> some people could say, <laughs> when did you really, when did you edit it properly? I am still a beginner editor, I understand. But, um, but I definitely didn't get around to editing it, editing it in time for Memorial Day. So, um, <clears throat> so I had to decide, all right, well, I guess Veterans Day it'll be. So, um, so yeah, that one was a little bit behind schedule, but there we have it. And, uh, let's see here. Um, so, uh, and, okay, so, Rick, you're coming in November 11th. And November 11th, now, why is it, okay, I don't know why I had it in my head that Veterans Day is on a Thursday. I, but I had it in my head it was on a Thursday. But I also thought it was on November 11th. So I was a little bit confused about when that holiday is happening. But luckily, uh, I was, I, I, I looked it up, uh, and the YouTube video will be debuting on the proper holiday day. I can, I can guarantee that. And so let's see here. Um, so, uh, 
So, um, all right. So before we carry on, I want to say, or I want to read, of course, what Kenny wrote. In honor of the upcoming Veterans Day holiday, I'd like to give a respectful nod to Columbus D. Casey, U.S. Army World War I, William C. Casey, U.S. Retired, Army Retired, Vietnam, and John Henry Casey, U.S. Navy. I'm going to assume those are some of your family there, Kenny. So there we have it. Shout out. Um, oh, thank you so much, uh, Darlene, for the 400 biddies and eMusic. I have to tell you. You and Ann Ware both are just inspiring me so much. You've got classes that you're taking and learning how to do things and stuff. And it's just so awesome um, that you're doing this. And it's even more awesome that you have time afterwards and energy afterwards to come hang out here. So um, that is super awesome. And um, and so let's see here. Ann, good to see you. All right. See, I was literally, your ears must have been burning I just mentioned you, Anne, talking about the class, how you and eMusic are taking classes and how that makes me so happy. And so um, don't worry that you're late. You've got things and stuff that you've been doing. And um, and Anne, she already knows that I got the dish, the washing machine today because Anne and Cindy Krause and I were chatting on Discord um, when the when the delivery people were here. So um, so Anne already knows the story of the of the washing machine, as it were. So uh, so we don't need to get her caught up on the washing machine. <laughs> but Bacola tea, I don't know if you were here, but I got a washing machine. Everything's super stoked. So. <laughs> So now, um, let's see here. What was, um, here we go. Posse Cat was talking about the East Coast of Florida is going to take a pounding from beach erosion. High rise condominiums and motels are being evacuated in fear of collapse. Oh, wow. Well, that's, is that normal? I mean, like, is is that normal, Puzzy Cat? I don't know if I've ever heard of that happening before. Then again, I'm not really talking to Florida people right before it's happening. I don't really know. But is that like, do, are they normally afraid of building collapses? No. Okay. That is, um, that is what I thought. And Cindy Krauss, I can put away the washboard now. You're right. I can. I, the washboard's in my kitchen from when I, yeah, you're right. I can. I can put away the washboard now because you guys, I actually did have a washboard because um, sometimes I didn't feel like going to the laundromat. And so I would hand wash my stuff with a washboard. They actually still sell them at my hardware store. They do at least. So um, let's see here. Darlene um, worried about the heart hurricane Nicole coming for Florida, worried about Danny Settle and Puzzy Cat and others down there. Yeah, Puzzy Cat, this is a bad, you're telling us it's a bad storm. You know, I gotta say, Fuzzy Cat, um, I, uh, I, it doesn't make me comfortable when I hear a Florida person saying, this is gonna be a bad storm. Like, you know, uh, you guys are just so used to what I would consider catastrophic flipping storms that, you know, you guys are just like, oh, yeah, it's a hurricane. Yeah, I plan on getting drunk, whatever. And so, um, so to hear, or I guess not to hear, but to see you saying this is a bad storm, I'm getting a tone that I just normally don't get from Florida people about the hurricane. And so, um, <sighs> all right, then this will make me a little bit nervous. And um, let's see here. Um, Cindy, hang it on the wall like a trophy. I might with that washboard. And Emi's like, yeah, I think the condo collapsed, though, because of. Well, I don't know if it's... Well, we could be talking about two different condos. But I thought the one that collapsed... The one that I'm thinking of that collapsed... I thought it collapsed because of, like, years worth of... Hey, we need to fix this. And nobody fixed it. And then finally the building was like... Okay, well, I'm done waiting for you to fix it. And the building just collapsed. I didn't think it... You, I don't know if you're talking about that one... Or if you're talking about a different one that, like... Got its foundation washed away which is what it sort of sounds like they're thinking of the might happen with Nicole. And that's, um, well, as Puzzy Cat said, that's not normal. So um, let's see here. Jim Cantery uh, from the Weather Channel is in D Daytona Beach right now. And um, 
And let's see here, another condo tower nearby. I'm assuming the one that collapsed has been evacuated as well. Goodness gracious. And, um, yeah, ground was saturated in Miami. Okay, okay. Oh, it was in Miami that the condo collapsed because of the ground sat. Yeah, it had something to do with the, the, the foundation sinking or something. And I'm assuming water had something to do with that. And, um, let's see here. Kenny Singh to Pussycat, when Jim Cantory shows up on to your weather event, you know you're about to be boned by Mother Nature. I don't have the weather channel, so I don't actually know who this guy is, but it sound, I assumed when Pussycat mentioned it, like, everybody should know who he is, that he was kind of a big deal weather guy. Um, but I, um, I didn't know who he was. And Pecola T, you haven't seen your favorite human in a couple weeks, and you're picking him up in the airport tonight. Gotta finish your art project and clean up before he's home. Bye. All right, cool. We'll see you later, Pecola T. Ahoy ho. Good to see you in for just a little minute. And um, let's see here. Darlene coming in with some news. Uh, the way it's coming in, the hurricane going to impact quite a few. Not normal at this time of year for a hurricane to come through. That's what I was trying to wonder. Or That's what I was trying to wonder? No. That's what I was trying to figure out. I was wondering, when is hurricane season because I kind of I mean I know that hurricane season's like six months but when does it start and when does it end because for some reason I thought that it should be done by now but I know that it's like such a long season it sort of feels like no offense Florida but it kind of feels like you guys are always getting you're, you're always in hurricane season um so but when is the like the tradition traditional time frame for the hurricanes um can can someone tell me because we we don't get those out here um <laughs> so okay um okay e music it starts in june and ends after thanksgiving i knew that june was like either the beginning or the ending of it i just wasn't quite sure so okay so this is the tail end of the hurricane season okay that's good that's good. And then Puzzy Cat coming in. Sea walls are falling apart from the last storm. And now it's getting the buildings on the beach. Wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Florida's going to have some cleaning up to do, it sounds like. Um, more so than usual. And let's see. Um, okay. So, Darlene, it's usually done by now. This is a more rarer event or storm. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um yeah, Rick, sea rise and storm surge, not a good con combo for the condo. Totally, totally. So, um, okay, so it's actually, so Pussycat, you're saying it's not really through the end of November. It's more like the beginning of November is where it sort of ends. Got it, got it. Um, so, okay, the e-music is coming in. Well, it used to be the beginning of November, but then Hurricane Eva came in uh, at the end of November, and so the season got extended after that gotcha okay all right well you know that's there's a lot of things that you're like i want the season to be extended but hurricane season really i don't know if i've ever heard of anybody who wanted that to be extended i want ski season to be extended i've heard that before hurricane season yeah not so much not so much um and then they're talking about some serious damage, especially since so soon after the last hurricane, Ian. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, because I normally, from my far away perspective, obviously I don't know anything, but it sort of seems like two really big hurricanes hitting Florida in the same season doesn't usually happen. Obviously, you can tell I'm very unsure about what I'm saying. But it seems like the really bad hurricanes are usually like a once a year event or once every couple years event. But now it's like multiple times a year, it seems. So, yeah, nice. Um, yeah, either way, this is the second time in five weeks from the last storm. Within a couple weeks, two bad ones. Yeah, that's not good. That's not good. <laughs> Kenny from the Cove. Life can get fragile when you're trying to reason with hurricane season. Yeah, no doubt. So, okay, Rick coming in with faxity, faxity, fax. Google says the 2022 hurricane 
Atlantic hurricane season is the current cycle. Wait, uh, season is the current cycle of the annual tropical cyclone season in the Atlantic Ocean in the Northern Hemisphere. The season officially began June 1st and will end November 30th. Got it. Puzzy Cat, in 2004 you got hit four times. Oh, well, I guess my perception is wrong. Um, all right then. Ugh, four times. That's not good. Um, e music, been following hurricanes for decades, more than one big one. All right, see, like I said, I don't, I'm, I am clearly clueless. But on the bright side, I at least admit I'm clueless. <laughs> so, <laughs> Kenny from the Cove, be right back. Forgot the towels in the dryer. Yeah, you don't want to forget that. Then they'll get all wrinkly. Because let me tell you, taking clothes fresh out of the dryer and folding them so they don't get wrinkles is is very lovely. Especially when you have the washing machine right next to the dryer again. But that's just me getting overly excited about my new toy. And I know it's not a toy, but I don't care. I'm going to call it a toy. And um, let's see here. Rick and the 2022 Pacific hurricane season is annual tropical cyclone season in the eastern and central Pacific in the northern hemisphere. The season officially began on May 15th in the eastern perspective eastern Pacific and June 1st in the central. Both will end on November 30th. Okay, okay. And Puzzy Cat, yes, my dryer has worked this entire time that my washing machine has not worked. However, because of that, I'm fairly certain it will eventually be dying. But right now it's alive. However, so however, however, however. Okay, so as excited as I am about my washing machine, I have to admit it did cause um, it did cause a, a bit of another problem in my house. Yeah. So now that I have my washing machine, and the washing machine that I did have before, I hadn't used in years. So, like, the drainage pipe was not, I guess, as clear as it could be or something. Anyway, it has, since I got my washing machine installed, my shower is now draining very slowly. So... Uh, now I need to maybe get a plumber out to snake my shower drain so it will um, drain less slowly. Because I think the washing machine and the um, and the shower somehow um, are connected. Because the last time I didn't use, when my washer first stopped stopped working, it started working again after like a, a year or so, and so I did a couple loads of laundry and then it broke again. So, uh, but when I did the loads of laundry, the, uh, it kind of like the, the pipe cleared into my shower. It's just gross, but I cleaned that up and everything was fine. Well now, and, and I was expecting the pipe to clear up, um, with the new installation of the washing machine. I was expecting the same thing to happen in my shower this time, but it didn't. And so I was like, yeah, right on. And so then right before the stream, I was like, I need to take a shower. So I took a shower and then I was like, oh, I'm standing in, um, I'm standing in water that isn't draining very fast. The water eventually did drain. So it's just slow draining. I think what I'm going to do before I call a plumber is I'm going to squirt a whole bunch of, um, uh, yeah, I can't even the cove. I can buy a shower snake, um, and snake this shower myself. But here's the thing. I don't, I don't want to buy another tool. I don't have room in my house to store another anything. And, um, and so, uh, you know, um, I, what I'm, before I get the rotor rooter to come on over, I'm going to pour some Dawn dish soap down there to see if it can loosen everything up and just, we can flush it itself. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because apparently um, when your toilet gets clogged, one of the first do-it-yourself home remedies they tell you to do is to um, is to uh, use Dawn dish soap to try to unclog the clog. 
Because apparently the dish soap has like all the degreasers and it like just gets in there and loosens things up. So then you can, um, you can do, you can drain it. And so, um, so I'm going to try the soap first. And Puzzy Cat, Drano, I have Drano in, in my cup, my cupboard under my sink. But if the Drano doesn't work and then I have to call a plumber, it's an extra $75 for a chemical exposure fee. And so, um... I don't want to have to do like all of my home remedies. I want to keep in the non-chemical realm. So if I do have to call somebody, uh, I will just not have to pay the extra 75 bucks. Rick, I could use a bottle of Prell instead. You know what? Dude, I have a bottle of Prell. Um, I might try that actually because Prell is ridiculous. So, um, actually, I, I might try that. I, I actually very well might try that. And, um, and, uh, let's see here. Kenny, you got yours at Walmart and you use it on your bathroom sinks. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think it's, I don't, Puzzy Cat, I don't think it's my hair that's causing the slow drain. Because, A, I pick my hair out of the drain every time I go to the shower, every time I shower. But also, the last time I showered, it was completely a good, um, you know, it was a completely, uh, clear flowing drain. All right, SD Dodger, come on back in 10 minutes and let me know if you've got any home remedies for, uh, for fixing a clog. So, um, <laughs> I know that you were, you were being funny, Rick, but honestly, like your funny idea is, it's not a bad idea. It's definitely worth, um, you know, <laughs> oh, gotcha. You meant I was going to disappear for 10 minutes. <laughs> well, all I know is you guys are super helpful with a lot of ideas. And so um, if you've got any home remedy ideas, uh, I definitely am up for them. The Drano is it's on the table, I guess. But um, but I don't really it's sort of a last resort, frankly. And in regards to like getting the snake tool, etc., yeah, I mean, it's probably a good idea to have one on hand. I really probably should get one, but I don't really have a place to store it. And it's not exactly a something that's just like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna keep that in the corner. You know, it's like, that's kind of a gross thing. You know, you kind of want to put that in the garage or the shed or the whatever. And I don't have one of those. So, um, so I generally try not to collect tools, even though from the pile of tools that I have, you wouldn't know that I try not to collect tools. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's see here. Don't mix the Drano with the Dawn or the Prell. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. Kenny, you've got, um, uh, yeah, you've got, um. You've got your own commode auger too. Right. See, I don't, yeah, I just don't, I just don't know if I want to, I don't really want one of those. I mean, I guess as a homeowner, I should, but I don't want one in my house. I'd rather just pay to like have somebody come and like, you know, um, come and do it. Rick, just leave it in the trunk of my car. I could, except I don't have a trunk in my car. I have, um a uh, Subaru, you know, hatch, or, uh, you know, a little station wagon-y looking thing. And I try not to keep anything in my car that people might want to steal. And any kind of tool is like thief magnetism, right? You know, and so I, um, I couldn't, I don't really think I could even keep it in my car. And I don't really know if I want to keep it in my car. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> On a hot summer day. What's that smell? Why does it smell like a dry sewer in here? <laughs> so, and Kenny, you know, the Don or the Drano might work, might not. Yeah, well, um, <laughs> Rick, ain't nobody going to steal that snake. Okay, you might, you might be onto something there, perhaps, perhaps. But, um, but I can tell you that I had a uh, toilet clog a little while ago. And, um, and, uh, uh, 
I called the plumber and I only have one bathroom. You know, I only have one toilet. I only have one bathroom. So not having a toilet is kind of a big deal. So I called the plumber and I was like, and they're, you know, I was like, can you come over? And they're like, not till tomorrow. And it was just like, but tomorrow is not what I want. I want my, no. And so, um, so anyway, I went online and did all of the little home remedies. And I'll tell you what, dude, it, it was the Dawn dish soap um, that did it. It was the Dawn dish soap. And so I'm a big fan. And then I told the plumbing lady when I called, I, I got, I did get put on the books for the next day. Um, but then I called and I was like, hey, I don't need them anymore. And she's like, how come? And I told her what I did. And she was like, that's brilliant because my toilet's kind of clogged too. And they don't have time to fix mine. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, um, so she told me, and she also said that using the Dawn was a good idea because if the plumber did have to come out, and this is how I found out about the chemical fee, if I had used something like Drano, it would have cost me more, $75, for the chemical fee. So um, that's how I found out um, about that chemical fee. And, um, oh, there's a can of compressed air I can use to shoot the pipe clear? Well, now that's interesting. Do they have those at, like, hardware stores? Is that a common, or is that something that only professionals have? Um, so let's see here. Oh, Kenny, okay, so you always clean your augers with very hot water and then Lysol. Oh, well, that's not bad, but I still would rather do what Anne says, which is, nah, go with the pros. Every time I've used my snake tool, it hasn't worked for the level of problem I've had. Get the big snake pro. So it sounds like Anne's kind of on both sides of the fence. Like, get the snake, but still call the pros. <laughs> and, um... Darlene, Dawn is better than any of the other dish soaps. There's just no two, there's, there's no two ways about it. I mean, I, I understand that like we're not washing oil spilled ducks in our kitchens, but there is a reason why they use Dawn to clean the oil off of the ducks in the oil spills. The degreasing action in there is just, it's as strong as it gets. And um, let's see here. Old timers would use sulfuric acid to clear cl drain clogs. That's probably where the chemical hazard fees started. Would not even be surprised. Would not even be surprised. And um, Anne is coming back with the reality check about the compressed air. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, Anne, is the compressed air. That can be very messy. I've used that once. Splatter of all the ook. Ook. Duke, Duke. <laughs> oh, Rick. Now, I'll tell you right now, we've already had this conversation, only the conversation was about shampoo, and you know what happened to you when we told you that not all shampoo is the same. Go try Prell, all right? Well, same thing with dish soap, my friend. Same thing with dish soap. It's not all the same. It's not all as good as Dawn or Prell. <laughs> Kenny from the Cove, don't do the compressed air. If the clog is bad enough, you can shatter your pipes. There's a reason why professional plumbers don't carry coat hangers or compressed air on their work trucks. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they would... What the hell would you do with a coat... I don't even want to know what you'd do with a coat hanger. Never mind. But, um... But, uh, but okay, so compressed air, maybe not the route to go. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, actually, Anne, if she was referring to the compressed air, has already talked me out of it, just with the splatter of the ook. And it, Rick, that was shampoo. Dish soap is way different. <sighs> oh, man. If you only knew. If you only knew, my friend. Listen to your wife. Listen to the one who uses the product to know, yes, it's the most expensive, stupid dish soap on the, on the shelf, but it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. <laughs> See what you deal with. Exactly. And you still let them eat the cookies that you make, Darlene. Um, and let's see here. Fuzzy Cat's like, no, it's not the safest thing, but it works if you know how. Well, let's see here. Um. Puzzy Cat, have I not made it clear that 
I don't know how. <laughs> I would like to think that that is one of the most obvious, obvious things <laughs> that we can all agree on. Oh, she doesn't know. Oh no, she doesn't know how. <laughs> so I might trust you with the compressed air, but I'm not so sure that I can trust me with the compressed air. Now, I'm assuming you don't mean this kind of compressed air, right? Because <laughs> I know how to use this stuff, but I'm guessing that this is not the stuff that you're referring to for the shower, um, the shower problem. Yeah, and also, gosh, I'd probably just, what, freeze the, if using this stuff, I'd probably just freeze the clog, and that wouldn't help. That wouldn't help at all. And, um, let's see here. Kenny, okay, so some folks will try to use a coat hanger to break up a clog. I, that just seems, that eh, just seems like a bad plan. And, and where you might try a plunger on the shower drain to wiggle it loose if it's a minor one. That is hysterical because I've done that before and it only made the clog worser. And I told the, I know, I, I know worser is not a word, but that's how bad it made the clog. So when I, so then I really had to call the, <laughs> the plumber in and I told him what he did and he was just like, oh yeah, no, that wasn't a good idea. So um, <laughs> I definitely uh, won't be trying that again. I'm glad it worked for you, but it, yeah, I did backfired on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Fuzzy Cat, I figured this wasn't the compressed air that you were referring to. You were actually talking about a product made for the the actual pipes, totally. Totally. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, so even though my shower is draining slowly, it still drains, which means I can still bathe myself. And the, um, uh, the, um, the fact that I have a new plumbing problem because of the new dish, not dishwasher, the new washing machine, you know what, I don't care. Like, that's how much I love my new washing machine. I don't care that it caused a new household problem. I mean, of course, isn't that what household problems are? You solve one and then a whole new one pops, you know, pops up. So, um, but you know what, I don't care because I have a washing machine now. And um, let's see here. And uh, Rick, okay, really use boiling water rinse after the Dawn Prell in the shower drain. Yeah, absolutely. That's part of the... Um, that's part of the home remedy. The boy gotta have the boiling water. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, let's see here. Kenny from the Cove, and if you use Drano on a clog where the water absolutely does not move at all, the thermal reaction from the Drano can melt your pipes. Oh, fork that noise. No flying, flipping, firkin, flirkin way. No, no, no. Okay, I don't wanna do that. But luckily the water does move, but still, Drano is one of the last things that's going to be on my list to try. Um, honestly, I probably won't try it, uh, but famous last words, right? I mean, you know. And yeah, exactly, and oh, the joys of home ownership. Yep, it really is. But you know, I have to say, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the country, um, but rent prices in my area have gone up so drastically that honestly, I couldn't afford to live in the King County area if I didn't own my home. Um, because all of the, all you know, even tiny apartments that are smaller than my house are renting for more than my mortgage payment. And, um, and I, you know, my mortgage payment stays relatively the same every year. Granted, it does go up a little bit incrementally because of property tax increases, but it doesn't go up nearly at the rate that rents have been going up. I mean, rents have literally been increasing like 30% every year, and that adds up after a while. Um, and so I am very, like, even though owning a home has its own set of expenses, as we can see, um, and even though owning a home requires you to have a little bit more know-how than, <clears throat> than maybe I have, uh, <laughs> I still think that, um, I still think that I have made a great decision to own the home that I am living in because, uh, like I said, if I had to rent, I wouldn't, I would not be, I wouldn't be able to keep the job that I have because I'd be living too far away from the job that I have. And the job that I have pays very well, but not good enough to live by myself 
with the rent that is going around now. And so, okay, Darlene, it's not just the Seattle area, it's Wisconsin too. You've known people who've gotten huge rental increases. Yeah, and in some places that's totally legal. Burien, where I live, just re- just recently, like a few weeks ago, passed a law where um, you have to give, uh, if, if the rent increase, you have to give 30 days notice of a rent increase of 10% or lower but anything above 10%, you have to give 180 days uh, heads up of the increase so people have time to save up to move because some landlords were literally like, oh, here, you're here to sign your new lease. Well, the rent is going to be up 30% from last year. So, So you can sign here and you're finding out like the day that you're signing your lease that your rent is about to go up 30%. Well, I can't afford that, and you didn't give me any time to go find a place that maybe I could afford, so that's not fair. Um, and so, uh, so um, Burian finally passed some laws that make that not okay, but the unincorporated King County, other towns in our, in our state, they've got no renter protection laws like that, and I'm sure there's other places in the country that don't have renter, prote- renter protection Um uh, type uh, uh, laws on the books and it you know that makes being a renter very expensive and Puzzy Cat you're gonna need a new roof after tonight's storm you know what dude I hope you're wrong I mean normally I don't just be like I hope you're wrong like but no seriously dude I hope you're wrong um, of course you know doesn't matter what I hope <laughs> but I, I hope you're wrong I hope that you're I hope that you uh you know that I hope that everything that you're saying right now is wrong. That's that's all I got for you though. And um, oh yeah, it's an old rooftop, and you needed a new one anyway. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. But still though, I hope that the roof sustains minimal damage. That it still can pretend it's a roof until you get that new one. And Doe, yes, rent goes up. Your rent went up 350 from 1200 to 1550 and you couldn't find a place. Exactly. And 1200 to 1550 that's a big deal. I mean, that's actually a, like a 25% in, actually it's yeah, it's about a 25% increase. Um and that is absolutely um for a lot of budgets that's un uh, that just doesn't fit. A 350, a brand new expense of $350 in a budget. A lot of people, when they're make trying to make ends meet, that you know, dude, 350 is n- I can't. What? I'm not gonna eat. You know, I, oh, okay, so I'll have a place to live, but I won't pay my power and I won't eat because that's how it, it. It's you know, my 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 food and electricity and utilities budget just got sucked into my rent. Yeah, I just you know. Um, it's it's sort of it's unsustainable i mean wages aren't going up that quickly <laughs> right and um and you know dog help you if you're on a limited fixed income like retirement or you know disability or pension or whatever and so um and uh yeah and it, but see rick though what doe said is is what is happening in and around the Puget Sound area. Like what Doe just said is not unusual. In fact, it's the, it's kind of the normal rental story in this area. And I'm going to assume probably in Hawaii too. In fact, I I'm going to go out on a limb and say all up and down the West coast rental increases like that are the norm. Um, and, uh, and it is, it's unsustainable. Um, and it's, and it's, and it's unfair to the renters who maybe really would like to stay, but they need to figure out how to afford it and still budget it. Um, or they need to find a new place that they can afford. Uh, and, you know, if you don't give people time, well, then they get evicted and then they don't have a home. And, you know, I mean, it's 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 a problem. <laughs> and so, um, so Wisconsin might be not seeing increases that severe, but... Um, but it is absolutely on the West Coast. Um, it's what's going on right now. It is the reality of the rental market, which is why I say I'm so happy that I own or me and 
that I have a mortgage, I guess is what I'm saying. Because the rental, you know, I'm, I'm out of the rental market now. And, um, and Kenny from the Cove, yeah, being on a fixed income really sucks canal water. And you're so glad your house and truck are paid for. Precisely, precisely. Um, those are, yeah, those, <laughs> those are two very expensive bills that you don't have to worry about. Awesome, awesome. And 12000 for a new roof, Puzzy Cat, that's actually not that bad. Um, I mean, obviously I don't have 12000 that I can just throw to my roof. But, I mean, I've heard of roofs costing way more than that. So, um, and e-music, rental amounts have doubled here in Northwest Wisconsin. Exactly. So that tells me then that they must be going up at increments like 20%, 30% at a time in order to, you know, have gone up, have essentially doubled. And, um, and let's see here. Um, Rick, good question. Is that after storm prices or just ordinary replacement contractor price? And you're going to make a claim to your insurance company after this one? Well, might as well. I mean, if, you're, if your roof was in, injured, no, not injured, <laughs> damaged. If your roof was injured, you need to call your uh, personal injury attorney. No, if your if your roof was damaged, it makes sense that um that you should that you should. I mean, that's what that's what insurance is for, right? Right. And um, let's see here, uh, Kenny from the Cove. Ain't nobody getting rich in the disability retirement game, as far as you know. No, probably not. Not unless they randomly hit the uh, hit the um you know uh, the Powerball or whatever. Oh, Puzzy Cat, that price was from about 10 years ago. That's why that price sounded so good. I was just like, 12K, that's, that's like really not that much. <laughs> I see. That's that's your that's your in your dreams price, it sounds like. Uh, yeah, if it's from 10 years ago, I'm going to bet 25 cents that the quote that you get later is going to be higher than that. Just saying. I'll bet you one quarter that it will be higher than that. <laughs> Which is exactly why you should get your insurance involved. That is right. <laughs> All right, you guys. So, um, I don't have a Lono music video um, to play for you today, but I do have a Lono video to play for you today. This video was not created by Lono, and it certainly was not created by me. It was created by a <clears throat> video producer on Molokai named Molokai Matt. And if you remember, many, many months ago on Satterbox at the Cinema, I shared one of his movies called Sons of Halava. And um, it was an hour-long movie, and it was about the Halava Valley on Molokai. And so... Um, and so... Uh, Molokai Matt, he did a video, a little short documentary about Lono music, and I thought that I would share it with you because we do seem to have a, a little fanship for Lono here on this channel, and I'm not sure if all of you know, um, if all of you know about the history of Lono music, so to speak, and so I wanted to, uh, yeah, share this with you guys today. So here we go. and a player in the, the company Lono Music and we uh, we do old style traditional Hawaiian music um, from Molokai and our music mainly consists of Molokai's history it's uh, historical sites it's people and sacred places then we say Molokai Nui Ahina, Molokai is Ahina. Iola Mao, Elo Vau Yaoi. Love, love you, Molokai. May you live forever. Home Hanao, Puleo, birthplace, the powerful prayer.
I wasn't born on Molokai, but I was raised here most of my youth. And I attended Kilohana School and Molokai High School. Music uh, was pretty easy for me because of uh, my tutu lady uh, teaching me and kind of nurturing me to that direction. We started off with, uh, uh, it was called Ono Lono Music. <laughs> and it was basically music that I, I, I enjoyed when I was a youth. And my kupuna and my uh, makua <clears throat> would be playing and listening to this music and having so much fun with it. And as the, <clears throat> as the time went by, uh, you know, I lost a lot of kupuna, a lot of tutus, and a lot of my makua. They left now, and, uh, and how I miss them, and I miss their music. So I know that music is the, the closest thing that I knew of that brought me back, brought them back to me, brought the memory of them back to me. My biggest influence was definitely Pops Gary Payune. So my uncle played bass guitar for him, uh, Joe Gang, that was my uncle. And uh, him and I, we played the same way, we played both left-handed, yeah. And um, so that was my biggest influence. And, uh, you know, I played all kinds of music. I played rock and roll, jazz, hip-hop, rap. I did all this music. And none of them really gave me the uh, satisfaction, the joy that comes from inside than this, this type of music. And when I see the kupuna's faces, smiling with tears coming down, I know I did my job. And that feeling is uh, something that wells up inside of you and just boils up and just comes out. You know, you got to kind of get back into the loi let's just say, get back into the taro patch and uh, do your work in order to feel the aina and feel it so that you can uh, be exposed to all of its histories and so therefore it's not uh, from me personally, but it is from uh, the aina, from the land and the people that were here before us. just stay here on Molokai and we rarely leave the island to promote our CDs. We don't have any distribution. We do it ourselves and uh, you know when I speak of we, <laughs> it's myself and Akua. So I always try to invite him in as my team, yeah, as one of my team players and I'm one of his team players and so with his help I'm able to uh, perpetuate this music. So let me, oops, I forgot to do something there. All right. So I'm glad, um, I'm so happy that I got to share that video with you guys. I'm not sure if you had found it already on your own in your YouTube searches um, about Lono. Uh, I know that um, I have given Molokai Matt's <clears throat> website on excuse me, not website, uh, site or uh, channel on YouTube. Uh, I believe I've probably exhausted his, his, his works as it were. Um, and so, uh, if you are interested in Molokai, um, the history of it, uh, all sorts of things, Molokai Matt on, on YouTube is definitely where you want to check out what you want to check out. He's a filmmaker based out of Molokai and has uh, he's done a lot of videos on I mean 
he did a video about the the plumbing system that that the water system on Molokai, which actually, frankly, is kind of, was kind of fascinating. I thought, um, but you know, I mean, he really like <laughs> like you want to know how the water supply is is transported from one end of the island to the next. Well, Molokai Matt has a video about that. So um, let's see here. Kenny's saying when you watch. The videos where Lono's doing a traditional style song, you can tell he ain't just playing the song, he's feeling the music. Absolutely, yeah, um, absolutely. He um, He's not uh, just, you know how some singers, if they don't speak the language, you know, they just sing the words, but that's they're phonetically just repeating sounds, you know? Well, Lono obviously knows what he is speaking. He speaks Olelo and... Uh, and uh, it feels it for sure. Like you said, you can you can see that he actually, you know, he's feeling the music as well. And um, Rick, right on. You already knew about Molokai Matt's channel on YouTube. Fantastic, fantastic. So, yeah. Um, and Molokai Matt actually has a lot of Lono videos, um, like sort of video videos that you would consider traditional videos. You know, one song performing kind of thing um, that are different than the ones that Lono's got on his channel. Um, so. Uh, so his uh, Molokai Matt, lots of Lono content, but like I said, also just lots of Molokai content. And so um, I really enjoy uh, enjoy watching what he's got. And um, yeah, exactly. The other documentaries are really good too. Yeah, he's got documentaries about um, about Koolave. He's got documentaries about various protests and this, that, and the other thing. He's got documentaries about um, uh, 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 about uh, taro farming, kalo farming. He's got a uh, series of videos I believe um, about rock building or rock wall building so um, <clears throat> yeah it's a really it's a cool channel and it sounds like Puzzy Cat you might have um, you might have heard of that channel too so yeah so if you guys haven't um, haven't checked out that channel I really do encourage you to check out that channel because you can actually you can learn an awful lot from Molokai Matt's um, videos and you're right it, Lono does show up a lot in his videos Matt and Lono are really good friends. I believe Lono knew Molokai, Molokai Matt's father um, back in the day. Because Molokai Matt is not that old. Like, when I finally saw a picture of him, I was like, wow, I kind of expected him to be older than that. Like, I think I'm older than Molokai Matt. You know, I think Molokai Matt is like in his 40s, maybe. Like, maybe. Um, so, <laughs> so um, yeah. Yeah. So Molokai Matt, yeah, is, um, like I said, I think, uh, now he and Lono are friends, but I do believe that Lono actually, like, knew his father before him. And so, um, so yeah, cool. Excelente um, <laughs> that you guys um, are all very familiar with Molokai Matt's channel. And Kenny, interesting fact, the population of the little Texas town you live in is five times the population of the whole island of Molokai. Doesn't surprise me. I think Molokai is running around, what, 8,000 some odd people um, on the entire island. And uh, the majority of them obviously live in Kaunakakai, but um, but still 8,000 isn't very big, even all in one city. Now, of course, not everybody lives in town. Um, so, so less than 8,000 people live in, in town. Uh, but yeah, the mo most of those 8,000 live in Kaunakakai and um, and then the rest are smattered all over every place else. And yeah, if you want some seclusion, Molokai is where you want to go. And um, let's see here. Fuzzy Cat, are you the girl that Lono sings about, Darlene? Oh, that's so cute. I have a feeling that Lono sings about a lot of different girls because, you know, I have, I have a feeling... <laughs> that he uh, that he definitely had his share of girlfriends back in the day. Um, now, don't quote me on that. I don't know, but you know, I do know that he was. This is what I do know. He was a musician. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, <laughs> Rick, hail Mad Statter, the Lone Obrarian. Yes, that is true. I am the Lono Brarian. So if you guys do have any questions about Lono, I might be able to answer them. Might not, but I could maybe give you a direction to uh, look in to find the answer if I don't have it. But um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, I just thought it would be um, a great uh, 
<clears throat> a great little um, a little video so we could all get you know get a little sense for where Lono is coming from. And um, let's see here, Puzzy Cat, Blue Eyes of Summer. Well, that is definitely not written about um, not written about uh, Darlene. In fact, Blue Eyes of Summer, I believe, was written about the same woman that um, oh. Oh, 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 I'm, uh, I'm totally missing the flippin' song. Oh, you know the song where he, um, until I get it right, until I get it right, it's, uh, the, that woman, um, is the same woman that until I get it right was written about. Um, and no, it was not Darlene. Uh, it was not Darlene at all. And let's see here, Kenny, you could live on a Hawaiian island where you don't have neighbors or tourists in your hip, in your hip pocket. Well, Molokai is where you want to go. I just got some real estate notices for uh, Molokai, two Molokai houses uh, that are on sale on, for sale right now. Uh, both are running around three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars for two bedrooms, one bath. <laughs> one of the lots is six thousand feet with plenty of uh, you know six thousand square feet. So um, <clears throat> so you know if you've got four hundred thousand dollars, Molokai is just waiting for you, just waiting for you, and. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't got four hundred thousand dollars. Just, just saying. <laughs> and maybe the song was about Rick. Oh no, I don't know. Maybe Rick does have some blue eyes, but I can say with relative certainty that that is not that song is not written about Rick. Um, in fact, actually, if you want to know a little bit more about who that song was written about, what you'll want to do is go to. Molokai Eevee Band, which is the band that Lono plays with now on Molokai. They have their own YouTube channel. And on that channel, there is a song called 1924. And in the description of the song 1924, you will learn all about the woman that Blue Eyes of Summer was written about. So um, let's see here. Uh... <laughs> Kenny from the Cove, you've got 400k just under the cushions of your couch. Oh, perfect, perfect. Well, then go get your house. Go get your house. Um, how big of a house? I don't. I want to say like. Um, I don't remember. I can look it up right now though. Um, it's on a 6,000 square foot lot, and um, it's a two bedroom, two bathroom. No, two bedroom, one bathroom. I was I was looking at it today when I was um, when I was in line at the bank, and let's see here. Okay, so the house is three hundred and eighty-five thousand, two bedrooms, one bathroom, seven hundred and forty-eight square feet. And then there's another house on Molokai that is four hundred and forty-five thousand, um, three bedrooms, one and a half baths. And that is 16, uh, about 1,600 square feet. So um, those are the two, the two um, houses that came up um, on my on my little real estate watch because uh, I still dream of moving to Hawaii, and so I have little redfin redfin alerts where they're just like, "Here's a new house that hit the market on Molokai. Here's a new house that hit the market in Waianae," and so. Um, so let's see here. Your house is four bedroom, two bath, 3,600 square feet, two car garage. Well, this particular, these particular houses actually have like the one, this two bedroom, one bath that was 750 square feet. It had a two, uh, a two car carport. Um, and it also, I think, had like an outbuilding or whatever. Now, the bigger house, I didn't look into the details of that because um, the, the teller at the bank was talking to me at that point so <laughs> so you know um Puzzy Cat, you want half a million for your house i are you are you serious that's all you want for it like that's not that's your house has got to be worth more than half a million i mean dude <laughs> my house is worth half a million <laughs> like <laughs> i've got a 500 square foot one bedroom one bathroom house <laughs> With a lot that's about 2,400 square feet. And uh, I think my house is worth mm, like a half a million. I can only assume that your house being where it's at close to the beach like that 
It's got to be. It's got to be worth more than 500000 doesn't it? Or is Florida real estate just, like, remarkably affordable? I mean, that's an affordable... Shoot, dude, I might go... I might buy your house. I'll trade you houses. <laughs> and Cindy Krause, you get notices too. You almost sold your house and moved a few, moved home a few times. Yeah, it's it's so um, it's so tempting to at least consider it, you know. Um, and honestly, one day I probably will, you know, move. Um, and my best guess is where I'll be living. It's probably not going to be Molokai. It's probably going to be on Oahu. It's probably going to be on the West End um, because things are vaguely affordable on the West End in comparison to to any place else on the island. Now, of course, I'd rather live on the East End in Kaaava, but I don't even have money to stop in Kaaava, let alone buy a flipping house there. <laughs> Puzzy Cat, why do you think everyone's moving to Florida? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm just... I, I still find it hard to believe that your house is only worth that much, given your access to the shore. Um, but, you know, I obviously don't know anything. Obviously, I don't know anything about Florida real estate, clearly. And, um... <clears throat> Yeah. Um. <laughs> Kenny from the Cove, give me a home where the millionaires roam, where the oil and the cattlemen play with their fishing oil wells, with their fishing oil wells and super hotels and count up their money all day. Yeah, that's um That sounds like a really good song to keep me from not moving to Texas. <laughs> I don't want to live in a place like that. <laughs> And let's see here. Um, and uh, Darlene, it's tempting, but was talking to Tina Rose. And yeah, she's pretty settled and doing good, but it wasn't easy. Hard to get choices, she said, on furniture and delivery issues. Um, and any <laughs> fuzzy guy, you don't live with the rich people? I guess, but if you live that close to shore, um, goodness gracious, you, I would think that they're, you know, um, I would think that they're not... Or <laughs> and Darlene, yeah, everything is expensive for sure. But I'm guessing that um, that Hawaii Island is even a little bit more of a pain in the arse than Oahu, um, just because Oahu is, you know, where everyone else lives, and so things, the cost of things isn't, I don't think, nearly as bad. Hawaii Island, though, I remember when I went there, and I went there a long time ago, and I remember when I went there, I was stunned at how expensive everything was. Whereas when I went to Oahu, it was just, and I went to the big island, I went to Hawaii Island knowing things were expensive. And even still with that knowledge, I was just like, holy working, oh my. Um, but Oahu, I mean, yes, things are expensive in Oahu, but honestly, they're not that much ex more expensive in Oahu than they are in Seattle. And so, you know, I was expecting more expensive for sure, but it was it was just like, oh, yeah, it's more expensive. Gas in Oahu was actually cheaper when I was there in June than it was in Seattle in June. I don't even know how that happened. And, um, and let's see here. Um... Uh, Cindy Kraus, you live in a small town with no stoplights, a thousand square foot house, and it's worth about 400000 or so. Nice, nice. Yep, there you go. Um, and yeah, Rick, I'm, I have no doubt that Tina is more than two hours away from Costco in Kona. Um, yeah, that's, I, that's, and that's taking the, there's all sorts of ways she could get to Kona from where she lives, but that's the quickest route. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, um... Yep, yep, yep. Um, e music, Hawaii Island and islands outside of Oahu take time to find out how to live cheaper than Honolulu. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, you know, the thing is, is though, it's like I don't shop at Costco anyway, so like, eh, two hours from Costco is no big deal. And um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh no, Puzzy Cat, uh, you're really. Puzzy Cat, I mean, I know that you're freaking out because you're really freaking me out at this point. 
Under the gun from the storm tonight, maybe there will be nothing left to sell. Yeah, well... I hope you're wrong! <laughs> I'm gonna just revert back to what I said earlier. I hope you're wrong! <laughs> um, let's see here. Kenny from the Cove, you've had a friend in real estate tell me that this little old hovel that I live in could get 80000 in the local market. I find that hard to believe. Go, <laughs> Kenny, go to Redfin. Find out. See what your neighbors are selling things for. You might be surprised at how expensive stuff is these days. Um, like I said, my stupid 500 square foot house is worth like 465000 Now, okay, fine. I said it was worth 500000 That was a lie. Uh, um, but <laughs> close enough to 500000 to round up. <laughs> so. <laughs> and, um, and let's see here. Rick, yeah, only two ways to get to Kona, Saddle Road or the Longer Coast Drive. Right, exactly. But you could go either way, can't you, on the Coast Drive? Um, maybe not, now that I think about it. Um, and let's see here. Um, for years, people on Oahu moved to Hawaii Island because it's less expensive than Oahu. It's called the Oahu Exodus. Interesting, because I'll tell you, man, um, I, uh, I, 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 I thought that Oahu was very reasonable in the food, the gas, you know, obviously I wasn't paying rent or utilities, so I cannot, ha I have no concept of that, but I do know that my friends, um, uh, okay, so E-Music, yes, there is three ways, oh, that was weird, E-Music, um, the Autobot <laughs> didn't like three ways to be uh, <laughs> I, I had to allow what you just said I don't know what was wrong with what you just said but the Autobot held it for a second so Autobot thought you were being naughty or something and um okay so there is three ways to drive to Kona I thought so but I was definitely not going to argue that <laughs> not very sure um so <laughs> so there you go um, and Rick, but once you sell, you got to buy something at those same prices. Yeah. And for some, for something like, uh, 80,000, um, $80,000, you're kind of limited in what you get to, what you get to buy. And yeah, Rick, you saw that too. Three ways not allowed. Uh, well, it's allowed now. I've, I've put it on the terms where it's allowed now. Um, now, <laughs> but I mean, I can only assume they were thinking that <clears throat> I, I think the artificial intelligence has a dirtier mind than we do here is what I think <laughs> so alright you guys it's 630 which means we should have been wrapping this up a few minutes ago so we are going to wrap it up and you guys I'm so thankful for every one of you the subscriptions the gift subscriptions the um, the biddies etc etc uh, you don't even know how much your input has helped me out in the last few months of trying to figure out how to get my house up and running again. So, um, so I want to thank you all for hanging out. And I want to remind you on Saturday, thanks to Malka503, we are going to watch The Princess Bride. That's 6 p.m. West Coast time. So it'd be 4 p.m. Hawaii time. 9 p.m. on the East Coast, 8 p.m. Central Time, folk. Rick, thank you so much for gifting that, gifting that sub to eMusic, and I am super stoked, Cindy, that you set your alarm and was able to hang out today. And um, yeah, you guys are just the bestest of the best, and so super stoked we get to spend all this time together. And Darlene, you better believe I am going to be running some dishes tonight, and I'm just about ready to put another load in the washing machine. It is a good, good day today. And eMusic, I'm right there with you. Never say Camuela. It is Waimea. You got it. So on the on that note, it's Waimea and Puzzy Cat. Stay safe. Do what you need to to stay safe. We're going to be worried about you tonight and probably tomorrow. And we're going to be worried about you until we hear we don't need to be worried about you anymore. So, all right then, 
Send Pussy Cat, Danny Settle, and all your Florida peeps love, and hopefully they will be safe with this hurricane coming through. And we will see each other on Saturday. All right, Pussy Cat, I hope I see you on Saturday. I don't think we will, but I hope I do. Okay, all right. See you later, guys. <laughs>